Warning, there will be spoilers for The Bad Batch Season 2. If you haven't seen it yet, proceed with caution. You have been warned. When the first two episodes of Star Wars' latest series, The Bad Batch Season 2, aired, I thought, okay, not as good as the first season's opening episodes, but I'm sure Dave Filoni has something bigger in store. But I was harsh in my judgment at that time. If you want to hook audiences into a new series, throwing in Order 66 is a sure way of doing it. And it worked. It would be hard to top that, actually. Now, we are three episodes in, and I can't stop raving about how good the episode titled The Solitary Clone is. Yes, Cassie and Andor series had the same effect on me, but that was a different kind of show, and they shouldn't be compared. Really, none of the series should be compared to one another. So, I'll try to stay away from doing that. No, what I want to talk about today is how deep the storytelling of The Bad Batch Season 2 actually is, and how Captain Wilco, Commander Cody, and Crosshair relate to one another in this series. And stick around to the end for a bonus side note on the clone's original DNA benefactor, Jango Fett. Are you a Star Wars fanatic, or even just a casual fan who likes hearing more about the greatest franchise ever created? If so, welcome home because Star Wars is all I talk about. So if the galaxy far, far away is your thing, then go on and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my in-depth discussions. You are all appreciated so much more than I can say. Now, let's get on with the topic. When Captain Wilco is asked to lie in an official Imperial report, he refuses the order. It goes against his moral code and his military training, and he gets killed for it. Let me take a moment for a side note on that. Yes, he's dead. As much as we all don't want to, that to be true, because we got attached to his character, he really is dead. He was a non-character before this episode. We saw him for one episode, and we really didn't care what happened to him before he stood up against Admiral Rampart. The writers made sure we know he's dead. They shot him and threw him off a cliff. A lot of people claimed he could have survived because others have survived similar fates in the past, but they were called Jedi, and one Sith in the case of Darth Maul. Anyways, back to it. Captain Wilco wasn't the first clone to go against orders, but he was the one that showed us that Captain Hauser wasn't alone in his feelings that the Republic had become corrupt in the form of this new galactic empire. No, Captain Wilco was there to show us this would happen on a regular basis moving forward. He's a side character that leads into other characters moving the notion forward. It begins with Wilco refusing an order and leads to characters we know rebelling entirely. Which brings me to Commander Cody. In The Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 3, we see Cody's appearance has changed. And with the accent marks of his armor changing from the orangish-yellow look of the Republic days to gray in this new empire, Commander Cody's individual identity has been stripped away. This is reiterated at the end of the episode when Crosshair asks why he won't be under the command of Cody. Admiral Rampart replies, Cody? Crosshair then says CC2224, and Rampart moves forward with the conversation. But it isn't just Cody who has his identity taken away from him. It's all clones serving under the Imperial banner. Much like Captain Wilco, Commander Cody is showing the stress marks the Empire is giving the soldiers of the past. Honorable men who fought and served throughout the Clone Wars with distinction and strict adherence to their sense of duty. Soldiers whose Jedi generals embraced their individuality and treated them as equals, cared for and respected by the Jedi. Now, they are just a number to the Imperial ranks. As Cody stands in front of the wall memorializing his fallen brothers, we can't help but wonder if the same thoughts were going through his mind that Captain Rex talked about during the initiation of Order 66. If not for the war, we wouldn't exist. But that war was a noble cause, peace throughout the galaxy, free from the evils of Count Dooku and his separate destroyed army. And Cody says it, he feels he is no longer serving for peace. The Empire has shifted from being the good Republic to a treacherous imperialistic occupation force. The Republic of the past recognized sovereign systems and left them to govern themselves, 
where now the empire seeks to dominate those worlds. And Cody says he isn't alone in these thoughts. More and more clones are feeling this way. Their brothers died in the Clone Wars for nothing. Ultimately, Cody disappears, leaving the Empire. Crosshair is the contrast of Captain Wilco and Commander Cody, a soldier bound to duty. His moral code has taken a back seat to serving the ones who created him. It can be said that Commander Cody planted a seed of doubt in Crosshair's mind, but that fact remains. Crosshair called the clones traitors who were doubting their new mission in the Empire. He compared them to the Jedi, who were now seen as the enemy. He also returned to his duties following the mission with Cody, and it wasn't until Admiral Rampart didn't recognize Cody's name, but rather his number, that Crosshair started showing signs of doubt. Maybe what Cody said did have an impact, but it was Rampart's taking away of the clone's individual identity that he really looked as though he was becoming disillusioned with the Empire. Crosshair had a loosely tight bond with his brothers. He knew Cody. He respected him. Now Cody was gone, and we can be sure that Crosshair started thinking about his closest brothers, the Bad Batch, Hunter, Wrecker, Tech, Echo, all names not numbers to him, all brothers with identities and individual personalities, men he loved at one time, soldiers who held their honor by saving him on Camino, even though Crosshair was there to kill them. He then may have wondered if his mission on Camino was a trap, one set to eliminate every member of the Bad Batch, including him, further driving a spark of a thought that he is no longer fighting for the Honorable Republic, that this empire was something evil born of that era. If you want another sign of Crosshair's individuality being taken, just look at his helmet. It no longer has the enlarged eyepiece with the target Crosshair. It's more standard, just as Cody's colors have become. Captain Wilco, Captain Hauser, Commander Cody, and Crosshair are all soldiers who fought for peace under the Republic and alongside the Jedi. They followed orders to execute the Jedi when Order 66 was given, and they all serve under the Empire, yet there is doubt in all of them. As of yet, we don't know what Crosshair will decide, leave the Empire or push his own moral code even deeper down and continue putting duty above honor. The next episodes and seasons of The Bad Batch are going to be really interesting. I can't wait to see how it plays out. Okay, for that side note of Jango Fett I was talking about. Jango Fett. The clones of the Grand Army of the Republic and now the First Galactic Empire were all created from the DNA of Jango Fett. They had been modified to be more docile in following orders and removing their individuality. Yet that modification seems to be fading. It has for some time. But it can't help but bring to light the personality of the most infamous bounty hunter of his day. As we saw him in Attack of the Clones, Jango Fett was a loner. A man taking nefarious jobs in order to keep himself active and line his own pockets, really. An anti-hero. A borderline villain. But the clones are showing us a different side of Jango Fett, one that suggests he was doing what needed to be done for his survival, that maybe his past really was one of honor, his past being the Mandalore and leader of the true Mandalorians looking for peace on his own homeworld. The personalities of the clones are a direct result of Jango Fett's own personality. Maybe the Kaminoans' methods of removing that aspect of Jango Fett was a failure or the effects were temporary. Because now we're seeing clones exhibiting signs of only wanting peace, individuality, and honor. It's just something to think about. Let me know in the comments what you think. I love hearing from you all. Your comments really motivate me to do better with each video. Just be respectful in the comments. We're all Star Wars fans here, and there's no need to trash talk anyone for disagreeing with you. Star Wars is about family, and that's what we Star Wars fans are family. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Be good to each other. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way, and positivity in the Star Wars community is the only way.